Hi, I'm Vince Giordano, Executive Director of the New Jersey Education Association. NJEA is committed to celebrating excellence in education. That's why we're proud to support Teacher Appreciation Week, a special series produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating New Jersey's talented and dedicated teachers. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. The law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com and by NJ Biz. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. There he is, Dan Papa, social studies teacher, Jefferson Middle School. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. As Teacher Appreciation Week continues. Listen, you uh, have a terrific project. We're going to see a video in just a second, part of our classroom close-up series we do in cooperation with our friends at the NJA. Uh, project Stay Gold, what is it? Correct. Uh, more or less, it's a student awareness uh, program. We're actually calling it a student abolitionist movement uh, to abolish modern-day slavery and human trafficking. So the students have taken the initiative to do everything they can in, in, in their power as middle school and high school students to raise awareness uh, and to bring public attention to the issue of human trafficking. Well, Dan said it. Now let's look at it. He said it better than I could. Here it is. Today, one of the most appalling atrocities against humanity from the past is repeating itself yet again, modern day slavery. We must not be content to allow this re-emerging crime to continue in our world. My name is Luke, and I'm an abolitionist. My name is Katie, and I'm an abolitionist. My name is Nathaniel, and I'm an abolitionist. These young abolitionists have taken their anti-slavery crusade, Project Stay Gold, to the internet. Their new website features original videos about modern-day slavery in America and around the world. It really surprised me the numbers of the people that are in slavery in the United States and that it, it even exists in the United States just blew my mind. Before we begin, I just want to give a little brief uh, introduction, actually, uh, to how Project Stay Gold came about. Our kickoff for our website launch and the launch of these new mean? videos was funded by a Pride in Education grant, um, which helped to fund the filming and the creation of the videos. Students want to inspire to other schools to start their own Project Stay Gold, and they want to have a global impact. Of this topic. Who's responsible? The people of the world. We can end it. We, starting with us, starting with us kids. It's just not a known subject and topic. You wouldn't bring up talking about slavery at a dinner table. It's like makes people uncomfortable. If people know that there's slavery, then they'll go out and they'll tell friends and they'll tell people and it will slowly diminish. Project Stay Gold gets its name from a poem quoted in a book popular with teens. To stay gold is to stay committed to idealistic goals. The project began last year with an eighth grader. I couldn't really just sit around and let it happen because it's really just disturbing and it shouldn't be happening. Kate came to me and said, we have to do something about this issue. Our students have identified a global issue and the global issue is that there are 27 million slaves on earth today. 80% are children, are teenagers, and are college students. So what's happening here is that students are taking on the initiative to really rescue their generation, and they are speaking out on behalf of them. We believe that education is power. Americans are involved in modern day slavery because believe it or not, most places that they go or most things that they buy could have been uh, made or manufactured by slaves. I teach history in order for us to make history. And I believe with all my heart that the students in my classroom are history makers. 
we believe that the abolitionist movement is going to begin with our students inside our classrooms. I am a history maker. I am an abolitionist. For more information and to see anti-slavery videos, go to projectstaygold.org. It's amazing stuff. This young lady, Kate, started this? What happened was uh, I was teaching about <clears throat> slavery in America's past, and I made the connection to you know, slavery still exists today. The United Nations estimates that there's 27 million slaves on Earth today. And in, with my smart board in my classroom, uh, I used an interactive website, and right. I showed them the issue. And I said, maybe later on this school year, we could do a, a school-wide awareness campaign. Two months went by. I, I completely forgot that I even really said it. And Kate came to me. She's like, Mr. Papa, I was on that website. <laughs> and uh, and I, we just have to do something was about it. Was it about human trafficking? Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a web, it was an organization out of Connecticut that's on the front lines of the battle of fighting modern-day slavery. And, and the website inspired her. Um, Steve, here, here's, the, here's, here's what it is. Young people have a sensitivity to injustice. When a young person sees that someone is mistreating another person, especially a child, there's an anger that rises up within a young person to do something and to make a difference. And Kate, among the other students that we had 80 students sign up this year in our school, 80 eighth graders to be part of this. And I, I believe that they are history makers and world changers. It's interesting. So many people talk about younger people as apathetic, hmm. disconnected, not caring, unconcerned. What do you see? I see the complete opposite. I, I, as I said, um, when, when I teach the Holocaust, the Civil Rights Movement, uh, modern day slavery, slavery in the past, I see a different level of engagement in my classroom. And it's because young people are sensitive to it. They cannot understand how one person could mistreat another human being, especially a child. And I appreciate what you're saying, and it says a lot about these kids, but how much of it has to do with, and I know you're going to be modest about this, how much of it has to do with the way you presented it? Uh, I, I believe that it, it could be part of it. Um, but, but again, I, I do believe in the innate uh, abilities within a young person to really uh, want to make a difference and want to make the world a better place. Young people tend to be idealistic and they don't take no for an answer. As an educator, as a teacher, what do you get out of seeing in the eyes of these kids, the reaction of these kids, not just in that video, but what you see every day, this website, the intensity, the passion, the energy, what do you get out of it? Steve, it, it inspires me. I mean, it, it, I feel like the luckiest man in the world to walk in that classroom every day. Number one, to talk about America, American history, which I absolutely love, which is a passion of mine. Um, but then just to see the looks in their eyes and to see that they are history makers, I believe it's exactly what Abraham Lincoln said. Abraham Lincoln said the philosophy of education in the classroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I, I believe with all my heart that we are seeing um, a generation rising up and, and looking to make a difference. This project's alive. It is. And by the way, what is that right there? Uh, I, I brought this for you today. What is that? This, it says abolitionist on it, Project Stay Gold. We've, uh, we've printed these and our students are wearing them and we're selling them to, to raise funds and money. Bob, get a shot of this. Talk about it. Uh, an abolitionist is simply someone from the 19th century who fought to end slavery in America, the abolitionist movement. And that's what we're seeking to do, to, to revive and reawake the abolitionist movement um, regarding the issue of modern day slavery. Our, we, we, have, we have sold close to 2,000 of those in one year. The first, uh, this is part of our awareness program. Our, our program at school is simply this. Um, a few seconds left, go ahead. Our eighth graders go into the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade social studies classrooms. They teach the issue. They sell wristbands, they sell t-shirts, and they wear them, and it sparks conversation. This is exactly what we were all hoping for. Hmm. You know, one of your kids said, we have to do this. Yeah. Everybody says, the government needs to. Right. No, right. we have to do this. I said to my students, we cannot shout at the darkness, <laughs> light a candle. And that's what they're doing, lighting candles. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Thank you for Keep this opportunity. Keep them doing this. Absolutely. It's exciting. It is. Give us a book report on it later. All right. Absolutely. Okay, Thank you very much, this Steve. This is great. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. 
Visit us online at oneonone.org or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ph.D. There she is, Christine Tesorio, who is a Spanish teacher at Cavallini Medical School, Middle School, excuse me, in Upper Saddle River. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Uh, great. By the way, why did you go into teaching in the first place? Because I hated Spanish when I was in middle school. No way! <laughs> I did. I have to admit, I, um, I had a lot of difficulty learning the language. I'm not a native speaker. Right. And I just had a hard time finding a purpose. What was I ever going to use Spanish for in my life? And so. that's why you did it. <laughs> and then it, it clicked. Something clicked in high school. So. Well, we're about to see a video. Our partners at the New Jersey Education Association, they produce this wonderful series, as I've said many times, Classroom Close-Up with our uh, partner network. Uh, NJTV is a wonderful series. Uh, check out the website at njtvonline.org. You'll see when they're up and also when that's on also the uh, website for, uh, for uh, the NJA. You teach seventh graders. I do. Okay. This is an interesting program, and it is, you're connecting students to students in Seville, mm -hmm. Spain. In Spain. Which, by the way, as we do this program, my son is in, I tell you, he's a, he's a student at Fordham, a junior. He's in Seville. He's, a, he's studying Spanish as well over there, uh, and he's excited about this, and he'll get to see this, because online there's all kinds of connections. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to Christine right after this, but I have a feeling the video you're about to see will explain more than you ever could imagine about this wonderful, innovative program, and this terrific teacher right here. Let's look at Classroom Close-Up right now. Okay, buenos dias, clase. ¿Cómo están? If you studied a foreign language in school, chances are you remember conjugating verbs, translating phrases, and having model conversations with your classmates. You also realize that it's not easy to become fluent in a language when you don't have the opportunity to use it in everyday life. Even in a culturally diverse state like New Jersey, where world languages are a required part of the curriculum beginning in kindergarten, Gaining the practical experience needed to learn a language is a challenge. At Cavallini Middle School, educators are using technology to meet that challenge. My students are enjoying the experience of having an EPAL in Spain because they really get a chance to connect with somebody globally and use what we're learning in Spanish outside of these four walls. They're taking everything that they've ever learned and then some and putting it into practice. ePALS is an online learning environment that enables schools from around the globe to connect and collaborate. For example, connecting a class of students in New Jersey studying Spanish with a class of students in Spain studying English. So this is the first letter she sent me. She says, hi, my name is Marta Yu. I'm from Spain. I'm 11 years old. My birthday is on the 7th of January. I live in Almencilla, which is a town near Sevilla. It's more interactive, so you're not just reading a textbook or having you take notes, you're actually like talking to someone your age and so I can connect to that person. Primarily right now we're emailing. Students can send an email and then also they're sending pictures back and forth but we're looking to hopefully Skype one day and even looking into maybe creating a blog where we can talk about current events and get everybody on the same page. In this new email that we did today, they were discussing food and culturally what that's like and the differences and similarities there. Students love talking about controversial issues too. We learned about the bullfight a couple months ago and students were dying to know what their ePals thought about the bullfight. How could they possibly be for or against it? And so that was an issue that they wanted to bring up right away as soon as they learned about it. To me, the most exciting part is when a student comes to class and tells me that last night it wasn't even assigned, but they went on and logged in and read an email and wrote back. So it's the motivation, it's the engagement, it's the smiles, it's all of that makes it really worth it. I think it's a huge advantage because you get to learn more from other people. Like, not every day a student is going to be able to talk to some person in Spain that knows a lot more Spanish than I do. We have more opportunities to learn Spanish, learn about their culture, and they have a lot more opportunities to learn about our culture, and I think that's pretty extraordinary. That young man, Thomas, he's into it, isn't he? They all are, yeah. Even the, the students who normally are not very motivated, they're I'm finding through this program they've really been intrinsically motivated. And they debate things like, it's fascinating, they debate things like bullfighting. Yeah. 
we'll learn about something cultural and rather than saying, oh, that's weird or that's so different, I can't even imagine why they do those things, now they have a real connection to it. And it's, it takes away the, the snap judgments and it allows them to open up the dialogue and, and have a real discussion in Spanish and English. They're having these bilingual conversations. It's interesting, it e-pals, right? E-pals. What has it done for you as a teacher? For me, it's all about the motivation, you know, because that's how it was for me as a learner. I, I didn't see a purpose. I couldn't imagine where I would use Spanish, and it just seemed like a burden. One extra class to study for, extra homework to do. And um, when I heard about ePals, I knew this was the solution. I knew that this was going to be the way, especially in a middle school, because sometimes Why? I find that a lot of times I talk to the students about, you're going to use this when you get a job someday. Everything is someday and I needed a way to connect them to the language immediately, here and now. And ePals did that for them. I mean, they're already communicating online, they're on Facebook, they're using blogs, and they're, they're doing all of these things that integrate 21st century skills, but now they're using it to connect to our curriculum. And that is something I could never have imagined. You know, I, I was thinking about the Skype part, because I Skype with my son as we're doing this program. There's a six hour difference, right? Yes. And so for academic purposes, that's a problem. Right. Because 12 o'clock, here on the East Coast in, in the United States is clearly, you know, six o'clock in the evening right. there, so it doesn't work. Yeah, we're looking, the teacher and I, um, you know, the classroom that we're set up with, we're looking the teacher into- teacher in, in Seville. In, yeah, in Spain. We're, we're looking into how we can do that, and we're thinking maybe if they stay late and we come <laughs> in early, there'll be some way to, to make it happen. You, you've, you're pretty innovative, aren't you? You have to be. What um, do you, you have, to be a great teacher, we, in the classroom close-up series that we've been doing with the NJA, the one common thread, other than passion and commitment we've seen in the teachers, is they are incredibly innovative. You have to be. Have to be. If you wanna, if you wanna get them, if you wanna, you know, to catch them and to get them excited, um, to make them wanna show up to your class, and you know, my goal is I want them to go home and when asked about their day at the dinner table, I want them to talk about my class. That's so funny you say that. I'll do that with our, our eight and 10 year old uh, boys right now. Tell me the most interesting thing that happened in school today. Uh, I'm sorry, the Recess, teachers who are watching probably. right now, but they'll, they'll come up with good stuff. But you want it to jump right out of the page, yeah. right off the page, like they have it. Mm -hmm. I was talking to this kid in Seville, Spain, and we did we talked about bullfighting, whatever it is. Right. That's innovative. That's exciting. One to ten, how much do you love your job? Beyond the scale. Come on, every teacher says the I same know, thing. I have in here. I know it seems cliche, but it's true. I mean, and again, you have to be. You have to be innovative, and you have to you have to love it, in order to. Um, it's to not make for the big work. cash. No, <laughs> it's not I big can't big. say it is. <laughs> no, it's not, right? No, I wish, but no. <laughs> it is for the kids and for the impact you have on them, right? I, th I think so. You know what? You, you should be very proud of yourself and proud of your students, and we are proud of you and, Thank you. and proud of our partnership with the NJA. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks for You're having You're a good me. representation, good representative of teachers. Great job. Thank you. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org, visit us online at oneonone.org, or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. There she is, the beautiful, talented, <laughs> smiling Mary Lou Bicknell, who is a basic skills teacher at the Thomas E. Boa Elementary School in Glassboro, New Jersey. How are you doing? I am doing great. I heard something that could not be true. I just saw it here. You've been teaching for? 34 years. Stop it! <laughs> truth. Not true. Yes, truth. I don't lie. You still love it. I love it. Passion. Yes. Haven't lost it. Nope. Amazing. I have this program. I don't want to give it up. This program we're talking about is the Real Men Read program. Yes, it is. Uh, part of uh, our terrific initiative with the uh, New Jersey Education Association, um, the classroom close-up series that uh, you see on NJTV all the time with our partners. You're about to see a piece of video about the Real Men Read program. I'm not even going to describe it. We'll see the video. Mm -hmm. And Mary Lou will talk about it after that, right? Yes, I will. Let's take a look at Real Men Read from classroom close-up, and then a very young teacher will come and talk about it. <laughs> Let's go to it. Welcome to our annual Real Men Read uh, kickoff breakfast. This is our fourth one this year. Mary Lou Bicknell is a reading specialist here at Thomas E. Bowe Elementary School. 
And while she's aware of the fact that New Jersey reading scores are among the best in the nation, she's also keenly aware that boys are usually more interested in sports than they are reading. So she came up with the Real Men Read program. My boys are now looking at the men that are reading and say, okay, our gym teacher doesn't just teach gym, he does read a magazine. The program invites men from the community to get together with the fourth through sixth grade boys at a breakfast where they can discuss reading. Mary Lou also displays posters of each guest to raise awareness about them and what they like to read. This kind of books I like. What kind of book do you like? I asked them what is it they wanted to be, and the vast majority are NFL. You know, they're all going to be sports people, and I just stress that you know, in order for that to happen, for that re to become a reality, you're going to have to go to college, and that's why it's important that they read and get a good education, because that's going to be the gateway for them to pursue that next level. How old was you when you read your first three books? The earliest I can remember reading my first book, I was four. And I was overly excited to be here because literacy is something that I'm very passionate about and doing works in other realms with, so it just made sense to definitely be a part of a program, especially in the district, uh, as this is my home district, uh, being an alum of Glassboro Public Schools, so I felt the need to be here to give back. Before I came to both school, I didn't really, like, I wasn't interested in reading, then I was in the Real Men Read program, then it got, then it was, it was getting more interested. It got me into reading more, made me read more. Real men do read, very definitely. I have a, a real strong interest in reading. I think it's, you know, uh, children should learn that at an early age. I, my, my own home is filled with books. Reading will help you in life and make you better at things. So that kind of inspired me to read more. This program to me has started as something that was so small and has snowballed into something that's huge. Boys who were reluctant readers, did not want to read, didn't want to pick a book up, are now picking up books. Boys who would maybe get a 20 on a test and say, forget it, I'm not going to read ever again, are now passing with, you know, a 70. I have seen some improvement, which is good. We have a long way to go still, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, which is great. Oh, I'm impressed. Thank you. You started this program. Yes, I did. How? Oh, gosh, about four years ago, I went to a workshop through the grace of my principal, said go ahead and go, and it was about bringing boys and books together. And if you've ever seen the posters in the libraries, it has a picture of LL Cool J, Orlando Bloom. They're standing there. It says read. They're holding a book in front of them. Our boys will never meet LL Cool J. They'll never meet Orlando Bloom, but they will meet my principal, the mayor, the chief of police. There's a great picture we have of a man on a Harley Davidson, Mr. Bryan. Mr. Bryan is our maintenance man. He takes care of our air conditioning and our heat, gets the balls off the roof. They love that picture of him on a Harley Davidson, sitting with a Harley Davidson magazine and his goggles across <laughs> his face, so he, they love it. Our gym teacher, uh, Rich Bertelli, they, when they saw his picture, they just went, our gym teacher reads? Like, they just to see the gym teacher as in the gym with a whistle, football, basketball. Did the, did the men who were involved, were they easy to get? Absolutely. No one has ever said no to me. Really? And I have, I have about 67 pictures. I have some parents, um, some soldiers. I always make sure that when I have my kickoff breakfast, I always invite a soldier, so it's always centered somewhere around uh, Veterans Day. Um, we have some parents that are on uh, reserve in the Army. Um, Marines, I have sure. some Marines that come. Uh, one of our teachers, her father is a retired Marine, so he comes in his dress blues and looks so nice. And the children get to see the men, that they might run in town, they might run them into the local grocery store, at Borough Hall, at the fire department, the police department, while their parents are paying their bills or taxes or water bill. You've seen some of these, uh, these boys. You've seen them grow tremendously. You've seen them achieve things that and they really may not have otherwise achieved if they hadn't gotten into reading and they got into reading to a large extent because of this program. What does that feel like? It's a wonderful feeling because they do come and say thank you. 
Um, there's a variety of different uh, venues for them. Um, just to give you an example, a couple of parents will come in and um, as well as some of the pe teachers. One of the people that we have come in is one of our Board of Education members. Um, <laughs> a great Board um, of Education great, member. Yes, he is. I he know. comes He'll in, he get reads, really upset when I can't Don't worry about it. Yes, I know. He knows um, who he is. But he comes in and he always gives all his exper life experience. He works for Lockheed Martin right. and Dan Marino. I knew you were going to yes, get I that. Yes, <laughs> anyway, he um, comes in. Anthony, sorry, not Dan. Dan Marino's a football Dan player. Dan Marino's a football player. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> Marino, yes, Anthony Marino. I was going to say, Anthony, wow, she gets yes, Dan Marino to Dan come Marino in. Go. Good. I have had some uh, Because you want to, Dan Marino want Dan to come Marino in, that's why. That's it. But um, an, but what's he his first name again? Anthony. Anthony. Anthony okay. Marino, um, big supporter, one of our Board of Education members, went to Japan, and in the springtime when we had our... Um, culmination end of the year party. He came, brought all these different artifacts from Japan. Boys Will Narrow wanted to, to research Japan. They Love wanted it. to research Lockheed Martin. They wanted to know what he did for a living. They became curious. Absolutely. Did, and are that's the, are the grades better? Yes. They have gone up at least one grade level in reading, wow. which is good. And we have a long way to go. Just like I said, we have a long way to go. And that's why I want to stay in the You know, teaching. it's so interesting to me. This particular episode, by the way, I want to tell our audience, this particular episode of Classroom Close-Up, which you can actually see at NJTV, go on the website and find out, was nominated for? An Emmy. How great is that? I know, that was just like so awesome. But you have to understand too, this program doesn't run unless everybody's on board. So from my principal, Kristen Matthews, to my vice principal, Ron Ferraro, and I'm gonna to try to get everybody's name in. Look at you, our like, teachers, I want to thank the academy. Our, even, <laughs> our, even our custodial staff, too. I have pictures of our custodial staff. So any man that the boys are in All right, one everyone. to 10. How much do you love your job? I love my job, 10 plus. 10 plus. Plus. I gotta tell you something, you're changing kids' lives and you started this program. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you. You're terrific. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSENG, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Bloomfield College. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. When you work in a public school, you're a part of the community. So when Superstorm Sandy hit, the school employees jumped right in to help. The middle school here served as a refuge for people who were forced from their homes. We all pitched in to help. Custodians, cafeteria workers, teacher aides, mechanics, groundskeepers, all pitching in to help out. School employees are part of a team, whether it's to help educate our children or to recover from a terrible tragedy. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of the NJEA.